Well, I'm, I'm very excited to be here. This is kind of a special event uh, for me because um, in speaking with Anne about conceiving this presentation, uh, I suggested that we bring along my, my friend Miguel and Antonio as well. Antonio is a Quiche Maya from the highlands of Guatemala. Miguel Sage is a Taino of descent and they're both involved in teaching indigenous wisdom teachings. And so I thought it was really, really going to be an important and special offering to uh, share the space with them. One thing I've learned in many years of studying and working with the Maya teachings that, uh, especially around the whole 2012 thing, you know, there's been a lot of interest in the 2012 topic in the media lately. And there's all kinds of ideas floating around about it. And uh, my approach to 2012 has always been to be a clear voice for the authentic Maya ideas as best as I could understand them and convey them as clearly as possible. So to have Miguel and Antonio here is kind of a special uh, uh, event because I think increasingly as we get closer and closer to 2012, we're going to be wanting to open up the, uh, the stage, you might say, to the authentic indigenous voice because I really do believe that it's the indigenous mind and the indigenous values uh, that uh, 2012 is really about. And we'll get into that a little bit as, as, we, as I do this uh, presentation here. Uh, we're going to get an exercise in our imaginations because I'll be speaking about these things and some of these things are sort of visually based astronomical alignments and things like this. And so I'll ask you to uh, uh, close your eyes and, and think about how the sky moves and how the ancient Maya were conceiving the sky's movements. And we're going to be doing this without, you know, slides and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be kind of fun. Um, my background with the Maya, it's really been my life work. And uh, I think it was back about 25 years ago that I decided I wanted to travel south of the border. And... I'd always been interested in Native American teachings. I was living in Colorado at the time, and I'd visited the Mesa Verde cliff dwellings, and I was aware of the Hopi. And there was something about the idea, as a young man who had a wanderlust, I guess, of uh, saving up a little bit of money and going south of the border. And that's uh, what I did. Know, it was kind of an easy thing to do, you know, either hitchhike or to catch the bus and then catch trains into Mexico. And I read a book by Barbara Tedlock, ethnographer, scholar, uh, who had studied with the Maya Indians in the highlands of Guatemala. This amazing little book called uh, Time in the Highland Maya. And I realized that the Maya were still doing these amazing calendar rituals and a lot of the calendar traditions survived. And so I took that first trip to Central America in 1986. And that was the beginning of many return trips and starting to read and study about the Maya. And so it's been a long journey living and working with the Maya. Uh, my, my early trips involved uh, sort of service projects in the highlands, uh, helping to rebuild a school, delivering leaf supplies. And then I eventually got into the research that led to 2012. By the early 90s, 2012 was sort of on the map for me as this enigmatic, unresolved question. I mean, you could read about it. What is 2012? Well, it is an authentic artifact of the Maya calendar tradition. It's not some new age invention or something like that. It's part of the Long Count calendar. The Long Count calendar was created by the Maya, early Maya people, about 2,200 years ago. Uh, it was actually, seems to have been formulated in this early Maya context in southern Mexico by the Guatemala border in this uh, region of Izapa. Izapa is an early Maya site. And you can go visit Izapa today and find carved monuments and 
astronomical alignments of the monuments and the and and the and the group, and uh, so this became the vector for my research, studying the roots of the 2012 system at Azapa. Nobody else had done that, not not even the scholars. I mean, it was generally recognized that Azapa was responsible for the formulation of the long count calendar, the 2012 calendar. Uh, one of the key things that I noticed is that according to the, uh, uh, according to how the Maya calendar coordinates with our own calendar, the cycle ending in the calendar, it's a 13 Bakhtun cycle ending. 13 Bakhtuns is 5,125 years. The Maya conceived of this as like a world age, like a chapter of human unfolding. And you can find in the Maya creation myth that there's a series of cyclic world ages. And Miguel and Antonio are going to illustrate this in a very nice way. Uh, a series of world ages. And the Maya believed that it, at the end of each world age in their cyclic time philosophy, humanity goes through a transformation and a renewal.